Welcome to the Forestry England podcast. My name's Bex, and I'm travelling up and down the country visiting some of the nation's most beautiful forests. Plus, I'm unearthing some rather surprising stories along the way. In this episode, you're coming with me to Hampshire. Four miles out from Farnham sits Alice Holt Forest, the last remaining ancient woodland in South East England. It's one of Forestry England's most popular destinations and is enjoyed by over a quarter of a million people every year. In fact, our producer Adam... Hi, that's me. ...has fond memories of wandering around Alice Holt as a child, trees towering over his eight-year-old head. Later on in the episode, we're going to try and turn these trees into music. But first... Forests are well known for well-being. Today we meet presenter and model Sharifa, who tells us about how getting out into nature has helped her to stay calm, cool and collected, especially with a high-pressure career. I think ADHD particularly has its own set of individual challenges and a lot of those do come down to stress management, but I think it can never hurt to move to exercise. And you'll find out why we spent three minutes staring at a pine cone and how doing the same might help you too. Japan has became a very urban area. Their employees are getting very stressed, so they're actually saying, well, part of your day, you need to go out and have a walk in, the, in green space. So literally, Shinrin-yoku means forest bathing. Now that voice is Helen's. She's one of 17 people on the active forest team. Helen is one of the most incredible people I think I've ever met. She's got a huge background leading expeditions into the wilderness. She's climbed mountains in Nepal. She's helped hundreds of young people complete Duke of Edinburgh awards. Helen is a tour de force of well-being. She lives and breathes the forest. So, stood in a small clearing just off Alice Holt's well-being trail, I started by asking her why she thought getting out into green spaces is so important. Life is so busy now. Um, Particularly in Britain, I think we just get caught up in you know, our next deadlines, you know, having the latest thing, the latest fashion, etc. But if we bring it back to basics of we, we are part of nature and, we, and I think we all recognise that in, in lockdown, that, that green space does make us feel better. And it is people, you know, when you go camping, when you go for a walk, you do feel better about yourself. And all the science is there now as well. I don't know if you've read, but one in four people will go to a doctor, not with a medical issue, but with a, perhaps a social or mental health issue. Mm-hmm. So whether that's loneliness or it could be you know, obesity or you know, you know, no mobility. So that going to a doctor with those conditions puts a massive pressure on our economy. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be you know, through productivity, through, through sickness, you know, days, days off sick. So if we can help with that, that will in turn helps on an individual level but also a a national uh, level as well you've probably been reading a lot of people have been reading in the paper and in you know in 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 the press about the scientific evidence around that we all know when we go outside we just feel better but but why is that you know why why do we feel better what do the trees do for us you know lowering our stress levels you know we've just come for a very brief walk haven't you've arrived this morning and i'm going slow down (laughs) and you've all you know you've already feel your know, heart rate, your breathing rate slowing down, your, your heart rate slowing in down. And it's that increase in when you go home today, you'll have like, oh, I actually feel good. You've had that fresh air and you increase in sort of happiness levels. What the scientists and the health professionals have done, they've done a lot of research and they've come up with these five areas for well-being. So one is that connection with other people. Because we live in such an urban environment, we're in our cars, we're on our screens, we're on our phones. When we go home, we look at the TV. Mm-hmm. We're isolating ourselves from, from nature. So by that, you know, that connection, that connection with trees, trees support each other. So let's get out and connect with each other. We're, we're social animals, we're social creatures, and we are part of nature. So secondly, being physically active. So increasing our heart rate, you know, lowers our blood pressure, improves our cholesterol. So we've got, we'll talk a bit more about the activities that we're doing in the forest to help improve that. Thirdly, learning a new skill. So, you know, that could be something at, you know, learning a, a new activity that you, that you haven't done before. Fourthly, giving to others. So Forest England, we do a lot with volunteering. So that helps not necessarily the forest, but helps that individual, connects with other people, etc. So it's, it's all good. And then being in the present. So our minds, and I know about you, but our minds are always full of chatter. Yeah. 
about kids, what am I having for tea, the shopping list. There's always a to-do list. There is always a to-do list. And if we are actually in the moment, it, it helps with those chemicals in our brain. So we have, there's three parts to our brain. One is our fight or flight, where, and that's where we get stressed. That's when our cortisol levels are increased. Another is our emotional side of our brain. So that's all of, you know, when we're upset or, you know, we, we feel stressed or we feel happy. And then the other one is our rational brain, our thinking part of the brain. So those five steps of well-being, if we can tap into our thinking part of our brain by coming into green space, lowering those cholesterol levels, lowering those cortisol levels, being in the present, that really helps with grounding us, what we were talking about earlier, grounding us with, and, it, and it's actually a chemical reaction in, in your brain. So that's where that whole well-being side is. So we can, the, we Forestry England have recognised that, as I said, we've got a national team behind us. So we've got different initiatives that we've instigated to help with that process. Yes, you can come for a walk and do your own thing, but sometimes we just need that little extra oomph and little extra help yeah. to, to support us. Good morning, lads. How are you this morning? Lads. Yeah. So this gentleman here comes every every time I come into the forest. You are here pounding away, aren't you? Every <laughs> yes. single morning. I'm on a slow one with these old codgers. Hey. All right, you're the fast one. <laughs> so just to improve, we're doing a podcast about well-being, but oh, your right. well-being every every morning you're here yes. and you go out for a walk, yes. don't you? And yes. And then I go another way with my wife. So about eight miles yes. a day most days. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So there you go. That proves that's 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 what we've got here. Yeah. He's here. Literally, when I drive in in the morning, he's pounding along the. He's normally we time it, and he's coming in on that entrance way but he does every single morning yeah but so we've got a lot of regulars like that that we see which is lovely yeah. <laughs> anyway nice to see you good luck with your podcast thank you very much nice to meet you i'll see you about i'm sure yeah see you in the nice. all right <laughs> so yeah the active forest program so as mentioned before there's 17 of us around the country mm -hmm. and you know different you know different uh, forests you know different sizes etc but essentially our job is to get people active in nature and yes you can come for a walk yourself but sometimes you just need that little oomph or little guidance about how to how to do it so we organize lots of self-guided activities so you can come and you do the running trails here you can do an or orienteering you know orienteering course uh, we've got walking trails, obviously, and then we've here at Alice Hall, we've got lots of like, free sporting activities. So probably see we've got we've got all the, the table tennis. <laughs> so that's really popular. Yeah, I bet. Um, and then in the summer we have the, the volleyball court out as well. Uh, that's we've got a lot of teenage kids come, you know, come and uh, use that in the in the winter. We've got a bike coming past here. <laughs> very as if one queue. That's I was going to say that. Perfect timing. <laughs> perfect Amazing. Timing. And then obviously we've got a lot of the group. Uh, things that individuals can can book onto, um, or a bespoke or or bespoke groups like closed groups, for example. So it could be anything from we've got buggy boot camp here, so for new mums that can come and exercise in the forest. We have running courses, so this time of year, obviously everybody's trying to get fit again. So we have a, a lovely lady who runs the Get Me Started course, like 0 to 5k, and then that leads on to. Uh, our park run and mm -hmm. then obviously leads on to further five and 10k races. It does seem from when you were talking before about the five kind of bits of well-being, it is very based in social activities like getting to know people, volunteering and you mentioned about trees helping each other out. Is that something that you think has almost been modelled on or is kind of inspired you? <laughs> yeah I think since I, well, I've been here two years and I've really learned so much more about green space and what trees can help us with and and I think, as you said before, it's that longevity. Trees are very connected. You've probably heard about the term the wood wide web, about how they're connected. We're scientists are looking at how they communicate with each other through you know, the chemicals underground. And they emit these things called phytocytes. So when trees are under attack, you know, they, they emit these chemicals. And it's almost like a natural aromatherapy. So, I think trees are very, uh, you know, if somebody had to design a tree that could stand up in like high winds and drought and, you know, rain and everything, you know, they've been here, what, you know, three, four hundred years. I mean, so many really old trees in, in, in the country and up in Sherwood Forest is, is amazing. 
and you, as a tree grows, it, it grows, you know, all its bits of nobbles and it has bits of scars and limbs drop off. And it's a bit like us, I think, as we get older, we start as, as this young, young sapling, <laughs> don't we? And then, and as we get older, you know, we have things thrown at us in life and like, but we still keep going. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. that's what a tree does. Like, yeah. and trees support each other. So there's scientific evidence that, you know, if, if a tree hasn't got a, one nutrient, then they'll send out a signal like, I need some more of this, and then another tree will help them. And I think we've lost a lot of that in our society because we commute and we're so in our little boxes and, you know, when we go home. If we can build that sense of community again, where we live, like knowing our neighbours, you know, coming and joining a group, you know, in the forest and, and that connection with people, that's the thing I think the trees can give us this, this lesson. And there's a lovely quote I saw, I was, went to work at Cannock Chase and there's a lovely little quote I took a picture of and it says that if you feel like you're losing everything, just remember that trees lose their leaves every winter, but they still stand tall and wait for better days to come. What a lovely thing to see and what a lovely kind of thing to feel as well, to know things are going to get better and, and it feels appropriate to say that in the middle of a forest. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, speaking of which, uh, you did promise me some forest bathing. I have no idea what this is. I was, I was Googling it just to check. I didn't need to bring like a swimming costume. No, you anything. don't need to bring a swimming costume. Great. Right. <laughs> so should we try it out? Yeah, well, let's, let's walk a bit further right. and we'll find a suitable spot. And Lovely. we can tell you a little bit more, more about what forest bathing is and perhaps where it's come from and um, try some, you know, some activities. As Helen and I wander a bit further down the wellbeing trail, it feels like a good time to remind you that if any of what Helen said so far sounds good to you, then you might want to consider becoming a Forestry England member. Membership means that if you live in England, you always have access to beautiful woodland near you to unwind in or maybe try out some of the amazing things you're hearing about today. And every forest has its own character, its own trails and things to do. So it's an amazing way to get some regular digital detoxing going this year. Find out more at the end of this episode. But if you can't get to a forest right now, here's something you can try at home or on the train, wherever you might be. I should say, actually, um, as we were setting up this chat with Helen, some of the team actually did this exercise with pens in the office. You really can truly do this anywhere and reap the benefits. So tell me about forest bathing then, because I have no idea what it is. I was a little bit nervous. I had to swim in the forest, <laughs> but I don't think <laughs> no, that's the case. No, not this time of year. No. <laughs> okay, good. So forest bathing, yeah, people are like, you know, what is it? And you've know, probably heard, heard about it. So it certainly isn't about getting, getting cold. It's not one of those ice baths. So do not worry. Uh, so it's come from Japan. Uh, so back in the 1980s, Japan became a very urban area. And what they were finding is their employees were getting very stressed. So they were actually saying, well, you need to go out. Part of your day, you need to go out and have a walk in, the, in green space. So literally Shinrin Yoku means forest bathing. Yeah, in, in, in English. And it's all about our immersion in, in green space. So the way we look at the trees and using all of our senses. So you know when we have a bath, you know, you say soak in the bath and you're like, and you relax, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you're immersed, yeah. You're immersed. So think about the same concept, but in nature. So it's all about that breathing in those phytocytes, those chemicals, those, those natural chemicals, and then using our senses, using those sense of hearing, sound, taste, you know, to have that complete Im Im immersive experience. So what we've done as you know for forestry england uh is you can you can come and do forest bathing yourself so we have a lot of downloadable resources from our you know our website or you can come and, and join a, a guided forest bathing session where you have a qualified forest bathing guide that will help you through those that that process and now i mean surrounding us now we've got we're on this quite a wide path of gravel gravel path but we've got you know huge pine trees you know probably the size of you know four-story buildings all the way around us and you know once we stop and we we start looking and listening you know we start looking at you know, in terms of our site we start looking at the different shades of green you know the different textures we've got moss on you know logs on the forest floor we've got you know prickly pine needles, we've got a lot of Douglas fir here, but we've also got, you know, some beautiful deciduous woodland, um, particularly a tree in front of us that looks like something out of a, 
um, you know, that's got all these different shapes and curls and twirls, haven't we? That's all covered in, in moss. And then we start listening to the bird song. You can probably hear, we've got quite a lot of rare birds here. Um, so we've got nuthatches, song thrushes, red starts. Um, so yeah, once you start tuning into that landscape and slowing down, you actually yeah, it heighten, those, you know, heighten those senses. So we're just going to do a little exercise, which you know you can do, you know, forest bathing out in your garden, but it's obviously being in the forest, you know, you get much more of a, an effect. So the idea is that you're going to use your, your different senses here and we're going to use our sense of touch. So we've picked up a pine cone. So what we're going to do is really focus on this pine cone just for a couple of minutes. So if you turn the pine cone around in your hands and then start looking at the different shapes. So is it round? Is it prickly? And then if you press it, does it give? Is it squidgy? Yeah, is it prickly? Is it smooth? If you run your hands up one way and then down the other way, are there any different textures that you notice? And then really start looking at some of those little leaves, really start looking at some of those really fine sections of the pine cone where the seeds are. Just focus on one part of the pine cone. And then if you turn it up one way on its end, there's a shape change. And then if you turn it up the other way, have you got a different shape that you see? And then do you start noticing your breathing a bit more? And your heart rate, is that slowing down? And then if you're comfortable, you can shut your eyes. Does the pine cone feel any different? With your eyes shut, you've taken that sense of sight away. And then do you notice all like the different sounds around you? Maybe it's the wind in the trees, the birds. And then really try and slow down that breathing rate. And then if you open your eyes, and then you can come back to the present. How did that feel then? Anything you want to share or notice? That felt so relaxing. I, I mean, I've never cared about a pine cone so much in my <laughs> life. It was just, that was incredible because yeah. it was just so much like, I really relaxed and I really heard the birds more and it just felt I could feel myself just calming down mm. because you do block everything else out that you're thinking about and you're just thinking about the senses like you say like what I can touch what I can hear um yeah that was a very calming moment yeah I think. Yeah, yeah that's incredible so it's really simple to do doesn't cost anything so next time you're in the forest stop somewhere and just start noticing you know the trees and the twigs and the branches going all the way up to the end or maybe it's different colours of green. There's so many different shades of green here. Or picking up the pine cone. But just focus on one thing and one sense at a, sense at a time. Mm. I think it's really important as well just to look up and around you because so often when you're walking, you're looking at the floor Absolutely. because you want to see where you're going. Yes. And obviously you want to make sure you don't fall over, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. obviously also helpful just to look up and around you and think, like you say, the branches and the twigs and the leaves, stuff that you might not notice if you don't take time out. Now, forest bathing does involve listening to the forest, but perhaps not quite in the same way that our producer Adam has been. 
I love what Helen said there about the wood wide web and this incredible, intricate network beneath the forest floor that supports the trees. You know, trees communicate with each other through something that scientists call mycorrhizal networks. It's basically fungi. It's an information highway where roots form roads. And it's possible, using some pretty clever tech, to measure the messages that these mighty beings send to each other and turn that into music. This is the sound of Alice Holt Forrest's Wood Wide Web. More accurately, it's the sound that two probes have generated, gently clipped onto a root, measuring the conductivity between the two points. What you're hearing is all of the subtle changes that happen as these trees photosynthesize, move chloroplasts around, and do all of the other incredible things that trees do. It would be wrong to call it the tree's brain activity. Trees don't have brains, at least not in the way that you or I do. But it's not far off. All of those subtle changes are being graphed in real time and rooted to control instruments. So each note you hear is an expression of change happening within the tree in the moment. I guess, in some ways, it's a measure of well-being. There's more from our multi-talented producer Adam next week. And yes, he did actually write multi-talented in the script. Now, this episode is all about health and wellness, and someone who's had first-hand experience of that is television presenter and model Sharifa. Sharifa's got a super high-pressure career, she lives her life in front of the camera. Diagnosed with ADHD, she loves to get out in nature and uses running to reconnect to herself. Maybe there aren't cameras in your life, but we all know how tough things can get sometimes, so we decamped to Alice Holt's Activity Centre, a really lovely little building just on the edge of the forest, to chat to her. I think that we have a very narrow view of health in our society. Like, okay, you just kind of eat, eat right. And you do a bit of exercise and, and, um, you know, and we have, we hope for good health. And then if you've got headache, then you take paracetamol, you take your medication and, you know, we just crack on with life. But I think, um, a lot of us might be starting to wake up to the idea that health is, is significantly more holistic and actually, I think connecting back to this might sound a little bit woo woo, but I am a little bit of a, and and I'm like a secret hippie inside. Um, but I think that actually really connecting to the, the forest and to, to where we come from, we come from the earth. We we're made up of the same stuff that the trees and the sky and the land and everything is made up out of. So I think it really actually makes sense that we connect to the natural world, but I think it can never hurt to do whatever you can to reduce your stress levels, to take care of yourself, to move, to exercise and all that good stuff. And that's actually why I love Forestry England, because you have such great, you have such great, incredible ways of of keeping people well and healthy in such a a wonderful way. So yeah, thank you. (laughs) Uh, So tell me more about your work with Forestry England, because you've been to a few of the forests, is that right? And I'm in the middle of Alice Holt Forest right now. I believe you've also been here previously too. Yes, I have. I went on the Go Ape. It was it was possibly one of the highlights of my year that year. Uh, I have a whole Instagram reel of my Go, of my go Ape moment um, at the forest, which was incredible. Um, what I would have loved to do, which I didn't get a chance to do when I was there, was do the forest bathing. 
Yes. So I've done a bit of this today, forest bathing, and it was incredible. It's so relaxing. I was so zen afterwards. Yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous that you did it without me. Honestly, I I think it's such an incredible idea. And it's also really backed by science, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It basically, it's a kind of way of like centering you. You kind of like are at one with like your surroundings. Like you notice all of the senses, like what you touch, what you feel. And um, yeah, it felt so calming. And I, because I was quite surprised it worked. Were you surprised that like, the calming effect that forests can have on you. Did you expect that when you came here? Honestly, I wasn't surprised. I think because even as a kid, I remember, did you ever, did you ever, when you were a kid, have a massive um, tantrum and end up like, I think we've all done this at some point, have a big tantrum as a kid and say that you're leaving home. Did you ever? Oh, many times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one time I did, I, one time I packed my suitcase, packed my little suitcase and I saw I'm leaving. I was like seven. I was like, I'm going, just don't try and stop me. Um, but I, I can't, and I think I packed my suitcase a couple of times actually. Um, but I remember one time when I had my big old tantrum, I went to the local woods and I remember whenever I'd get into a um, and it wasn't far. I mean, it was like, and you know, I wasn't just a seven-year-old in the woods by myself. You know, <laughs> it's quite scary. <laughs> just waiting for um, uh, the, the the wolf to come out, a Red Riding Hood guy to come out and catch me. Um, but you know, I, I went into the, I went to the forest, and I, I remembered I would always go there to calm me down because I was such a stressed out little kid. Um, all the time. And I had ADHD, but it was undiagnosed. So I think that might have been um, quite a few of my issues growing up. But um, I would always go to the forest and sit on the trees and, and it would calm me down. And it always it still does now today. If I've had a difficult day or a difficult meeting, I'm so lucky because I've just moved into my, um, my new um, flat in London and it's zone four of London. And it's actually kind of bordering Kent. And I think Kent is known as the garden of England, isn't it? Um, which is so lovely because it feels, I feel like I'm, I've bought a flat in exactly the place I needed to be. Um, and right around the corner is a beautiful park with woods. I think I totally agree with you. I think you're right. If, if somebody's listening right now and they're thinking, oh, shall I get my boots on or my trainers on? Should I go outside to the forest? Like, you know, is it worth it? Would, what would you say to motivate people or to like, just say to them, like, it's worth going outdoors and just, just having a little wander around and getting out in the forest? I would say no one ever regrets going for a walk. <laughs> I think it's quite hard to regret that. Um, also it's free for most people. You know, this is, I want to be gem generalized this because obviously not everybody has access to green spaces. Not everybody has transport. Not everybody has, um, the same abilities. So I caveat that with, if you can, but you know, it's generally free or very, very cheap. Um, you can actually have a really wonderful time. My nephew and I had probably the most fun a couple of years ago, um, in the forest because there was a, um, a trail. He's, he was, he was four at the time and, oh no, he was five. And there was, uh, we're both really silly. Like we, <laughs> I'm 32, he's five. And he sometimes has to like teach me how to behave, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but we're both really silly and we both love being out and about and being adventurous. And we had the best time following. There was like a trail where you see all the little, um, animals on the trees. We spent the whole afternoon. We got lost in the woods. There was like rivers. We were picking up little, looking at little bugs. Cause you can obviously find that you can um, identify the little bugs. There's so many amazing little, um, leaflets and bits of information they give you at the reception desk when you when you get there and they say okay you can take this trail and when you go on this trail you can look for these birds and you can, there is so so much to do and see people might think oh you're just going out for a walk in the woods that's boring honestly I have ADHD I get bored incredibly easily I have never been bored in the forest <laughs> because if you get all the information plan the day pack your sandwiches or or you know stop at the cafe and have something to eat whatever it whatever it is, you can really have an incredible day. And it doesn't have to be in the summertime or anything. It can be in the winter, get your winter willies on, put your comfy clothes on, get yourself a little hot, hot flask and a little picnic blanket. I think it's a really, really great day out. And I don't think anyone would ever regret doing it.
You know, all of this has given me so much food for thought. I've learned a lot about health and well-being and the ways in which forests can mellow us out a bit. As soon as I wandered into Alice Holt, my shoulders fell, I took a super deep breath, and it was just wonderful to stop and pause for a moment. And it really reminds me of what Helen said. If you feel like you're losing everything, just remember that trees lose their leaves every winter, but they still stand tall and wait for better days to come. Thanks for listening to the Forestry England podcast. This was episode one. It was produced and edited by Adam Stoner with help from Rebecca Small. Research by Kieran Sneddon and Dominic Head. I'm Bex Lindsay, and next week, you're coming with me to the Lake District to explore a very special sculpture trail in Grisdale. Together, we'll explore over 4,000 hectares of forest and woodland and discover sculptures by some of the leading names in art. So these sculptures have to be discovered by traversing the trails. They're not all there to see straight away when you get out of the car. So So it very much is part of that journeying through the landscape. If you've loved this podcast, why not take out a Forestry England membership? Whether you're looking to smash that couch to 5k routine, or just want somewhere incredible to take the kids on the weekends, there's literally no place like the forest. A membership is such a good way to support the amazing work that Forestry England do to care for the nation's forests. Their future is our future too. You can find out more about membership at forestryengland.uk. And check out the show notes for a whole host of information on different ways that you can spend your weekend in the great green outdoors. See you soon.